But for now, let me introduce our second speaker this evening. He's Professor of Political Economy at King's College, University of London, and his fascinating work focuses on the intersection between politics, philosophy, and economics. He holds a PhD from the London School of Economics and is a winner of the Atlas Institute of Economic Research Prize uh, for his work on the understanding of spontaneous order. So let's give him uh, a round of spontaneous applause. Please welcome IEA trustee, Professor Mark Pennington. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, those of you who know me will know that um, it's not often I, um, I dress like this. In fact, the last time I was dressed like this was at an IEA event uh, six years ago um, to celebrate the contribution of the late, great uh, John Blundell, who unfortunately is no longer uh, with us. So coming to glittering events like this is something that um, I owe the IEA for. <laughs> there are three dimensions that I want to speak about in my remarks this evening about what the IEA means to me personally. The first is as an intellectual inspiration. The first contact I had with the IEA was back in 1988 um, when I read, actually as a sixth form student, an IEA paper entitled No Room, No Room by Professor Alan Evans. That was a paper that I came back to in the middle of my undergraduate degree in geography at Royal Holloway College in the early 1990s. That degree was an experience that, well, in some ways I want to forget. I got a first class honors, but that's about the only really positive thing I remember from it. Because we were subjected to a daily assault on the foundations of a free society of market economics in a way that would make the current pope look like a champion of free markets. <laughs> the Evans paper was an absolute revelation to me. In No Room, No Room, Alan Evans provides a devastating critique of the UK town and country planning system using some very simple but rigorous economic analysis. And reading that paper and the intellectual challenge it mounted to the statist way of thinking in town planning circles is what actually inspired me to become an academic. If I hadn't read that paper, I don't believe I would actually have pursued a PhD. I don't believe I would have been able to have an academic career. So I don't think that's a bad achievement for an organization like the IEA. Not just for people like me, but inspiring lots of people to actually take up the cause for individual liberty and free markets. That is the power of the IEA, its intellectual inspiration. The second dimension I want to focus on is the way in which the IEA supports uh, young people. Now, somebody told me um, a few weeks ago, um, I didn't actually need telling this, I was well aware that I am now officially middle-aged, um, so I am no longer young, but I do remember what it was like uh, to be in my early 20s and entering into the IEA's offices. Um, I will always be incredibly grateful for the enormous support and sense of belonging that John and Christine Blundell provided for me when I got involved with the IEA, but also that the institution as a whole actually provided. John and Christine were absolutely marvelous, but the institution itself inspired a commitment to young people. It reached out to people to bring in a new generation of thinkers who want to champion individual liberty and the case for free markets. And I think that's been demonstrated amazingly in the last three or four years with the massive growth of the Liberty League organization in the United Kingdom. So when I was doing my PhD, there were only three student societies in the country that were libertarian societies or Hayek societies or something of that nature. Now, in 2015, we've got something like between 35 and 40 student societies championing these ideas. And it's largely through the support, in many ways, that the IEA has provided to young people that that organization has taken off. And again, I think that's an enormous achievement that the IEA should be proud of. 
The final dimension that I want to, to talk about is what I describe as the therapeutic role of the IEA. So it's common nowadays, and this always irritates me, to hear people describing the world that we live in as one of rampant neoliberalism, where free market ideas rule the roost. Well, I don't know about you, but this is not the world that I live in. The world that I live in is a world where market ideas are routinely attacked in the media, in universities, in all kinds of places on an almost daily basis. The foundations of a free society are under attack in all kinds of different ways, whether it's in the financial sector or even more disturbingly, those people who want to nudge us in directions that they personally approve of. In this kind of climate, my blood pressure tends to rise on a, on a very regular basis. So I read the IEA blog to get some kind of therapy, to get some kind of release from this worldview. So to read the contributions of Ryan Bourne, Philip Booth, um, Christian Nemitz, and Stephen Davis is an inspiration, but it's also therapy. It shows that there are people out there making the case for individual liberty, and people who aren't forgetting the importance, not just of paying lip service to those ideas, but speaking truth to power to defend them. We live in a country where the recently elected government has promised to provide us with a plan at every stage of our lives. That doesn't indicate to me a complete commitment to a free society. So the ideas of the IEA are absolutely fundamental in making sure that what a free society means is never forgotten. So the three contributions there that the IEA has made to my life, intellectual inspiration, support for young people, and ongoing psychotherapy. That's not bad in 60 years, and I think the next 60 years are gonna be even better. Thank you very much. Thank you.